Okay, so just a reminder of what we were saying about the, uh, the, the mini-series that we've got. So today we're talking about knowing the rules. We need to know the rules to be able to play a game, training for that. Then, of course, the, the cheering on of the, of the crowds is really important. And, of course, we hope that we're going to win and we'll think about what taking the win in the Christian life actually means. So if we could have the next slide from there. And that is our reading, if we could have the reading now. So hopefully everyone can see that. We don't have a reader today. We're going to read this together. It's a very well-known passage. And from here, we're going to think about what are the rules of the Christian life. So could we say this together? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I'm sure you know that passage well. The Great Commission is called. Um, so we're going to think about that bit in there where Jesus commanded to go and make disciples and to teach them everything I've commanded. So the question is, what are those rules? What did Jesus command? So we're going to start with an easy one. What two things did Jesus command? He was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus gave an answer to that question. What were the two things that he commanded? Shout it out. Love God. And love your neighbor as yourself. That should come up on the slide in a minute. There you go. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that's easy enough, isn't it? That's why I'm here. I'm here because I love God. And loving my neighbor, well, it can be a bit difficult sometimes, depending on who they are, but I will do my best. Okay, so let's have another song, and then we'll think a little bit more about a little bit more detail of what those rules are. Okay, please do take your seats. Now, I know you're warmed up because we had that question about your favorite sport, and I know that you know the summary of the law, the summary of the rules, which is love God and love your neighbor. But we're going to go a bit deeper now. So go back several hundred years before, and we see in the book of Exodus, Moses goes up the mountain and comes back down with two tablets of stone. How many rules were there on this? I'm going into assembly mode now. How many rules were there? Ten. Right, so your challenge is turn to your neighbor and name as many of the Ten Commandments as you can. Right, we see how we've done. I I learned from the 845 service when we did this, it's quite revealing the first one that you might say to me. Okay, so what do we think? What were the Ten Commandments? I'll tick them off on my list here. I've got a pen somewhere. Go on then, shout them out. What are the Ten Commandments? I do have a pen somewhere. Oh, I've got my pen. I've got my pen. Right, okay. Shout them out. Oh, you're all worried now. <laughs> if I shout out the wrong one, they're gonna, he's going to point fingers at me. Wait, go on then. So, do not steal. Okay, so we've got that one. Tick. Yeah, so, no murder. The 
Lord's name. Okay, do not misuse the Lord's name. Idols and images, good. No covet. Honor your mother and father. We're doing well. Sabbath. We've had graven images. Okay. No adultery. Right. Nice and loud. Can't hear. No lying. <laughs> Got that one. No other gods. No other gods. Can we have the slide which has got them all on there? We've done all right. We've got all ten. Now, can we notice something about Jesus' summary of the law? Because he said, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah? Can you notice that the first four of the Ten Commandments are all about God? Yeah? So do not worship any other gods, do not make any idols, do not misuse the name of God and keep the Sabbath. Yeah? And then the other six are about loving your neighbor, honor your father and mother, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not lie, and do not covet. So actually what Jesus was saying was covering the summary of those Ten Commandments. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so one more question. And this is for all of us. Now, you might have been wondering what this is all about. So, this I'm using as a sign of God. Sign of the cross, Jesus. And this is the best thing I could come up with. looks a little bit like a person. <laughs> Maybe a slightly strangely shaped person. But this is, this is people on this side. So God there, people there. Is that okay? So just like we did with the Ten Commandments. So the next slide asks this question. Uh, no, the one before that, please. Uh, yeah, no, it's the previous one, sorry. Yeah, the one before that. That's the one, lovely. So, we said the summary of the law was love God, love God, and love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? But the question is, what did Jesus actually command? And in our reading... Jesus says, go, make disciples, and teach them all I have commanded. Well, he didn't just teach, love God and love your neighbor. He did teach that, but he didn't just teach that. When we get down into the granular detail, he taught a lot of other things as well. He commanded a lot of other things as well. And I've got a document on my uh, computer at home, which I printed off for this, and there are 50 on there, we're going to look at 29 of them. Is that okay? And the question is going to be, is this about loving God? It's all right, you don't need to guess them. I'll tell you what they are. Is this about loving God or is this about loving your neighbor? Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so here you go. 29 commands of Jesus. And bear in mind that he's saying, go, make disciples and teach them all I have commanded. So, as disciples, and we, what's our mission as Christ Church? Making passionate disciples for Christ. So this is all about being a disciple. Um, I was quoting at the 845, the John Mark Comer book about, about uh, discipleship. And it says that a disciple is somebody who becomes like the rabbi becomes like Jesus. So Jesus is commanding these things because he's saying, this is what I do, and so I want you to do this too. So there are a few challenges coming, let me warn you, in those 29. So the first one, love God. Because that's what this is, loving God, isn't it? Love each other to see how it's going. 
Yeah, okay. Love each other. And of course, Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another so that people will know that you are my disciples. So that people will know you are my, my disciples. Okay, so let's try some more. Repent. Is that loving your neighbor as yourself or is that loving God? It's loving God, isn't it? It's, it's turning away from our sin, turning to God, so we restore that relationship by see, uh, seeking forgiveness from him. Okay, so that's about loving God. Don't worry. Well, that's kind of loving God, isn't it? Because the other side of don't worry is trust in the Lord. Yeah. Don't worry about tomorrow because today's got plenty of trouble in it. Don't worry. Rely on me. We did repent, didn't we? Yeah. Should we do it again? Because it's the first thing he said. <laughs> repent. Okay. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. That's, that's expressing our love for God, isn't it? Rejoice. It's a command. We're commanded to rejoice, even when things are difficult. Follow me. It's a command. Follow me. It's our relationship with God. Be reconciled. That's quite a command, isn't it? You know that thing about if there's anything between you and your, your brother or sister, sort it out between you before you go to the temple. Yeah? Be reconciled. Honour the law. It's God's law, isn't it? So that's, you know, listen to these rules and put them into practice. It's a command from Jesus. Don't promise. By which I mean, don't make an oath. You know, let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's, that's kind of honouring God as well, isn't it? It's... Don't give in to temptation. Try not to sin. That's honouring God again, isn't it? Now, it could be over here as well. It depends on what the temptation is, but... Anyway, okay. <laughs> Love your enemies. I told you it was going to get challenging. That is a command. Love your enemies. Bless them. Do not curse them. That's about our relationship with one another, isn't it? Go the extra mile. That's about serving others, isn't it? Seek God's kingdom first. Now notice the order. It's not seek God's kingdom second or third or 27th. Seek God's kingdom first. That's a command. Don't show off. Boasting. We boast in one thing. What do we boast in? The Lord. We boast in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Treat others like you would like to be treated. That's about how we love our neighbour as ourselves, isn't it? Don't judge. It's getting harder. It's a command. Judgment is mine, says the Lord. Don't judge others. Listen to God. Honour our families. Deny yourself. Well, that's kind of both, isn't it? But that's a command. It's really hard, isn't it? Obviously, I want stuff for me. But we're told by Jesus to be like him is deny yourself. Avoid untrue teaching. Seek the truth. Don't tolerate untruth. Is a command from Jesus. Don't be greedy. Because if we seek material things for ourselves, then somebody else can't have them. Don't be greedy. Forgive. 
And that ties in with a whole series of other ones, doesn't it? And of course, how often did Jesus command that we should forgive? Peter said, is seven enough? And what did Jesus say? 70 times seven, which means keep forgiving and forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. There is no maximum amount of forgiveness we can give. Pray is a command. When you pray, pray in this way. Offer hospitality to all. Loving your neighbor as yourself. That also means receive hospitality as well. Join in communion. We say that in the liturgy, don't we? But Jesus commanded us to celebrate the bread and the wine. Wait and watch is a command. And I think I've shared before that that's a really important role of the church is the gathered believers to wait and to watch for the signs of the kingdom and share those with others. Receive power. That's a command. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. Not you might be, you know, if you're having a good day. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. And he goes on to say, and receive power from on high, which was looking forward to the coming of the day of Pentecost. That is a command on us as believers to receive power. Not because it's a wonderful gift to make us feel good. It's to receive power so that we can be those witnesses, both in word and in deed in the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, go and do what? Make disciples. It's a command to make disciples. It's not an optional extra. It is a command to make uh, disciples. And related to that, number 29 is preach the gospel. He commanded his disciples, his apprentices, those who were seeking to be like him, to preach the gospel. And that is a command over the church today. So those are just some of the rules that Jesus laid out. Some are about loving God, some are about loving our neighbor as ourselves. But they are commands. So if we are followers, if we are true followers of our leader, then we are commanded to do these things. And all of them. It's a challenge, isn't it? And that's why he sent his Holy Spirit. Because the harder ones, the ones we can't do on our own strength, like forgiving people and treating people like we would like to be treated and not being greedy and, you know, some of those other bits and pieces. We can only really do consistently in the power of the Holy Spirit. So why are these rules important? Well, here's a couple of pictures, which we've, we've seen already, but just a, a reminder. We're, we're talking about knowing the rules, and we've just gone through some of those. What's wrong with that football pitch? And now, you don't need a deep technical knowledge of how football works to know that there's a bit of a problem there. How do you award a penalty? It ain't got a penalty box. <laughs> How do you know if somebody's offside? It doesn't have a halfway line. You know, it doesn't work. So rules are quite important because they give us boundaries for the game that we're playing. Now, you might recognize the picture in the top. A certain player called Maradona from 1986. <laughs> Sorry to pick at that particular scab for some of you. Uh, I don't know. Now... The name of the game is football, not handball. 
even if it's the hand of God. <laughs> so we need rules for order. So we know when a, when a goal's been scored. We know when something is right or is wrong. And then for any golfers in the room, you have to hit the ball with your stick, <laughs> otherwise known as a club. Blowing it in doesn't count. We have to have rules. We have to have rules to give us those boundaries and to know when it's right or it's wrong. And that's why Jesus commanded. And that's why he reminded the disciples that they were to teach others the commands. To live life to its fullness today. And of course what we'll look at in the last session last session, the last service of this mini-series, is what is the prize. Now, I've just got a little three-line last quiz for us all, and that is to kind of sum up what we've been talking about. So we can have the next slide, please. And it is, we enter the game by something, F, something, something, H. We play the rules by being O, something, F, something. So for those who don't like sport, this is like the quiz in the paper or whatever. Um, and then what we win is E something, L something. Shall we see if we can fill those in? So we enter the game. Any guesses what that F might be? Faith. So next slide. So we enter the game by faith. We play, the, play by the rules by being... Any guess? Obedient followers. So we enter the game by faith and we play by the rules by being obedient followers. And what we win, so that's your John 10.10, 10, and what we win is eternal life. That is your John 3.16. And that's the kind of theme for the series that we enter by faith, we play by the rules by being obedient followers, and we win eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that you sent your Son. We thank you for his commands over our life. Help us to move from seeing these commands as being mere suggestions. Help us not to walk from this place feeling the burden of guilt that we haven't done these things, but instead to have a new intent that tomorrow we tried harder to follow your commands than we did today. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And come, Holy Spirit, help us to do these things. Convict us of where we're not following your commands and guide us with wisdom as to how we can. And some of those will lead us into difficult decisions to make, needing to do things that we don't really want to do. But because you commanded us to, that we have a new sense of your Spirit guiding us in those commands. That we might be more obedient followers through our faith and make a difference to the world not only by loving God but by loving our neighbour as ourselves. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.